Hello YouTube, I am back with another video. In this video, I'm just going to be talking a bit about my painting style and why I have it and why or where did I come to develop it. So to give some more exposition about this, I took painting classes, traditional painting, in um, high school, then I further went on to take more classes in college. In high school, I applied to advanced painting 1 and 2, and I mainly practiced with acrylic and oil. I wanted to use gouache at one point, but the store didn't have it at the time, so I just stuck with acrylic for some time and then went on to move to oil painting, which is currently like my favorite traditional medium to paint in. It's just, it just feels nice. A bit messy, but it's very nice to paint in if you know what you're doing. So um, yeah, I took classes for about, I think four-ish years, two in high school, two in college, just to like build up my repertoire in painting because in terms of draftsmanship, I always knew I could just get better if I practice at home because it's easy to get a pen, pencil, paper and just practice all day long. However, with paint, um, I couldn't really do it at home since I didn't have the space to do so, nor did I have an easel at home. However, in, when I was at school, there was always enough space like palette, extra palette paper that I could use to actually practice painting, especially easels. Easels like makes the aspect of painting much more easy to do. So um, I did a bunch of that. I could tell you right now, I sucked at painting. I, the be the most I did with color was with color pencil, crayon, marker, but that didn't give off the aesthetic that I want. At least it it didn't do the it didn't do the job that I wanted to, it to do. I see amazing artists work with color pencil help with crayon, marker, all that stuff. Copic markers, they're a godsend, but that's a whole other topic. Like Copic markers, it's, is it's, I can't speak. Copic markers are in its own tier in terms of art material, personally. Some people say it's overrated because you can find cheaper markers that could, that more or less has the same effect. Um, That's definitely true. I think Prismo or some other company has used al alcoholic base markers too. So. That's definitely true. But anyway, back to painting. So when I first, when I finally got out of art college, I sort of had to move left and right. So I couldn't really bring all my canvases, my oil paints, my palette paper, my brushes. I sort of had to, at one point or another, drop them or like throw them out because, yeah, I think I think most of the brushes, like I didn't clean some of them, so the oil paint sort of got imbued and like fused together with the brushes so um that it made some of my brushes completely unusable so there was that so and plus i got at some point i got my ipad and while i may have done digital art prior to having my ipad um i had like an intuos 4 a small my god those were the days but yeah when i tried when i first got my ipad i got procreate and immediately just started painting digitally again because I could not do that hand-eye coordination thing with the uh, with like older tablets like not on-screen tablets the one that you have to look at the screen but you have to draw on the separate device I, I can't I can't do that I guess again when I got my iPad got procreate and um, I started going back to painting digitally and while my painting style got better due to the painting classes that I took um, it still didn't feel right and I guess that's where brushes come in and I'm pretty sure if you're in this art community you've heard it a million times the brushes are not what make the artist special it's how you use them and that is it's it's true definitely if not true it's definitely true to an extent brushes I wouldn't say they don't matter but let's just say that if you don't have the skills the brushes won't matter as much Hence why, despite me having these, currently at least, I have these oil painting brushes that I got somewhere, like I think I mentioned in the video or two before. And on top of my painting classes that I took, I'm able to utilize them to the full extent. I don't think I could just give these brushes to anyone and then tell them, oh, if you have these brushes, you will be able to paint just like this person or just like that person. Obviously that's not true. Um, hopefully most of you guys already knew that, <laughs> but um, yeah, in this video, I tried to paint in 
different styles. The first painting I did, I painted in my usual style. Um, after that, I tried to do different renditions of the smooth digital style that I see a lot of people doing that I just cannot get into for the life of me because, I don't know, it's, it's too smooth. Like, I feel like I'm painting on butter. There's some art styles that perfected this aesthetic, but it's not me. And I would say that choice is sort of what makes my style my style. Because at the end of the day, style, I would say, like, don't, don't put me to this. Don't hold me to this. It's, it's just my, my two cents, my opinion. But style is choice or style is about making choices like it's it's my choice to paint in this oil painting style to dumb um, digitally and it's of another person's choice to paint it that way and it, that is the sole difference of people that are painting a certain way because they want to and people that are painting in a certain way because that's all they know how to do hence why people always 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 say to learn the basics the fundamentals practice proportion learn realism it's not because they want to like you know like talk down to your style that you think you had from the jump it's because once you know the foundation you could do whatever you want after and at that point that's the choice that's your choice you're making and it just turns out that this painting style um only came about because i chose to paint the way I do traditionally just except on a digital means if I said that right I hope I did yeah now I sort of want to mention some artists that sort of inspired this type of rendering one of them is Izumi Kogahara um, I'm gonna put some pictures on the screen because this will give you guys an idea so you don't have to google anything but um I love her use of color and her brushwork she makes she make that I can't speak today my god um, she mixes realistic proportions with abstract colors that make her work really stand out. And notice how confident her brush strokes are. She doesn't overblend things. She's able to create gradual changes in hue and value without softening up any edges. Um, you'll sort of see them as splotches. Like it looks like she lays down one brush stroke and moves to the next brush stroke. She doesn't overly rub the br the canvas with her with her brush and to smooth things out. No, she doesn't do that. Another artist would be um it's this is, it's an artist on Instagram called Milk for my coconuts. Um let me let me look that up real quick before I say the wrong name because that'll be embarrassing. Uh, yeah, milk for my coconut. Um, I'm gonna again put some like pictures on the screen except for the not safe for work things because oh boy. Um, you can just look him up on Instagram, same for Izumi Kogahara. But um, if you see his work, I think this is all done on Procreate. But the brush strokes, the, it's so appealing to look at. It's again, it's the abstract feeling. Once it, people, it, it can look messy at times, but then again, that's part of the aesthetic. Like you could, it's still readable is what I'm trying to say, I guess. But um. Those those two artists right now is there as I'm looking at currently to help push my style even further because it's that's it's looking at other artists that sort of help develop style. That's the thing. There's a reason why there's so much videos about style because there's so many things that goes into it. But anyway, that is how I sort of got the painting style that I do now. It's still in the works. It's still a work in progress. It's it is by no means fully done or mastered and and that is the the intrinsic joy or fun of being an artist like we're never done like we're gonna keep learning new techniques we're gonna keep advancing and yeah that's what it means to be an artist i don't know i, I don't know how else to say it anyway thank you for watching this video this video has been sort of definitely disjointed and it has me stumbling upon my words a lot because I didn't write a script for this video and nor did I mention Ishida Sui for the hundredth time because my god I'm pretty sure you guys already know how much I love him as an artist um, try, I'm trying a bit to look away from just manga artists or just manga or cartoon things because there's beauty in looking at all forms of like art and artists so it helps I guess diversify your skill set diversify inspirations in terms of your style and all that jazz anyway thank you for watching this video 
I'm trying to upload once a week as I always try to do. If you enjoyed this type of video, please think about liking or commenting or even better yet subscribing. That will help me a lot. I'm almost at 1k and when I, when I reach 1k I'm going to be doing a bunch of announcements and updates. So yeah, thank you again for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next one.